Yeah. Representing Jeremy Hunt uh, this morning. How's he going to pay for all of this? Well, as you've just heard, it's by cutting taxes on corporation tax, you can actually help inspire economic growth, and that will help boost the coffers of the Treasury. Now, if you cut corporation tax, that could um, put businesses in a position where they can then afford to give their employees a pay rise, which fuels inflation. It's up to businesses what they do in terms of uh, how they rem remunerate their employees. But, of course, what we want to do is make the UK as competitive as it possibly can and have the economic growth that we want. Because we know right now, as I've just heard you talking about, we face the possibility of a recession. We need to make sure we're attracting the investment, the growth and the opportunities into this country. Tax and cuts are a, um, a fairy tale, according to the uh, most recent ex-Chancellor. He We've said had it. So he many said of them it recently. He said it about certain things, but I think no one would disagree with Jeremy's approach, which is creating the opportunity for people to be able to set up businesses in the UK and doing that through a cutting corporation tax to the lowest in the G20, that 15% would be the right thing to do for businesses across the country. And if you look at what we did over the pandemic, cutting uh, VAT, cutting business rates, you could see the benefit that that had with businesses across the country. We now need to employ that for the long term. OK. Um, Kick-starting the economy is what he plans if he is Prime Minister. Why is his campaign not doing as well as last time? It's doing very well. It's not. It's doing very well. I think one of the things that I've found and one of the reasons I'm on Jeremy's team is because he's got a broad tent appeal to people across the party and across the membership. He's a dignified candidate. He's someone who I think has a great deal of respect from across the party and across the membership across the whole of the country and I think we've got the numbers to make a really good showing this uh, and hopefully install them in number 10. I mean so they're, they're just keeping it in their back pocket Absolutely people take their time and people want to come public at, at their own at their own time but I think uh, you'll see that today. A remainer of course which is why he lost last time. But he's also as I've just said he's made a broad tent with people like myself who are Brexiteers with Esther McVeigh who's a Brexiteer you know he is appealing to all wings because he can actually deliver continue the program on Brexit make sure that we deregulate make sure that we make ourselves as competitive as possible and actually deliver on the some of the elements of the agenda from 2019. What did he mean by saying Esther McVeigh is his John Prescott to his Tony Blair? Well I think he meant that there's a good element of teamwork from north and south from different wings of the party and so I not think that's that, she, very that she's a working class Bruiser. No, I think it's that she's got great views and great values and he wants a part of the team. I think that's a very sensible approach to take. Because they're not, I mean, they're not um, what you would expect to be as um, bedfellows that you would, in the loosest top term of the words, of course, um, that you would expect in politics. Well, I mean, Esther described that herself. She said that Jeremy's not my natural soulmate. Well, I think they probably might become soulmates if this working relationship um, comes off. Because actually what I've seen thus far is they both bring great skills to the table. And I think that's a sensible approach as well. We've got to rebuild trust in politics. We've got to do better in Westminster across, across the board. I think what Jeremy is trying to do is attract people from all wings, and I think he's doing that very well. Uh, how do you feel about the 1922 committee changing the rules so that you need 20 MPs to take part in the first round? I, I think it's very sensible given the slate of candidates and the numbers who are, who are expected to uh, try and declare. Have you got 20? Yes. Have you got more than 20? Uh, yes, but we don't talk about numbers. Have you got 30? I'm not going to play this game. I think we'll leave it at that. But, you know, you will, you see, you will, see, you will see a nomination from Jeremy Hunt. You need 30, don't you, for the next round? We, we do, yeah. Do you feel that you'll go into the next round? I feel round? extremely confident about Jeremy's ability to, uh, to do well here. To go into the second round? Yeah. OK. Absolutely. How do you feel about fox hunting? He said that in 2019 he would reverse the ban on fox hunting. Well, my own view is that I'm absolutely fine with fox hunting and it's, it's something that we've discussed and wasted a great deal of time on discussing before and um, rural, rural issues are, are a matter that we've put to bed a long time ago, so... What about him? Uh, it's his opinion and, you know, we don't have to agree with everything. Isn't that the benefit of what Jeremy's putting together, is that disagreement, discussion, allows for a better conversation, better ideas, more innovation. That's the things that we need in government right now because we haven't had enough of that over the last two and a half Just years. Just talking about your personal opinion, you said last week Boris Johnson had done appalling damage to the party. Mm -hmm. In what way and how can that be reversed? You're going to say with Jeremy Hunt being Prime Minister, but in what okay, way is he done? Of course, but actually, you know, you know, all the candidates are standing are good, decent, honest people, and I think they'll bring their own credentials and ability to, to restoring that faith. Listen, we need to be better at listening both to the parties, the membership and the country. We need to make sure that truth and honesty are at the front of what we do. I don't think that's what Boris did in the, in the first instance, which is why I was the first of the 2019 intake to uh, vote against the Prime Minister and to put my letter of no confidence in him. But we've just got to get back on track and deal with the issues that actually really matter. And that is the cost of living, that is boosting the economy, that is creating the innovation and opportunity in this country. And I think Jeremy can do that, and that's going to be one of his... Well, that is the centre stage for what he's trying to do. Um, has he done a campaign video? Have I missed it? 
He hasn't done a campaign video because what he's doing is going individually to every member of parliament. He's getting out there, he's doing it in his own way. Jeremy doesn't need a shiny video um, with, you know, music in the background to get his point across. He's doing that face to face with every single member of parliament. Apparently, the 1922 committee rules say that you can spend up to £300,000. Let that just sink in at home. £300,000. Will you be spending anywhere near that amount? Or is that just vulgar given that we've crossed a living crisis? I mean, a campaign cost is a campaign cost. I mean, compared to other countries, that's remarkably cheap, to be honest. But um, I don't know how much it costs to run a full campaign. I'm afraid this is the first leadership campaign I've taken a more active hand in. So I don't know how much it costs, so I don't know how much you'd end up spending on it. OK, but do you think that that's quite a vulgar figure, given uh, people are struggling to heat their homes? I mean, to select the next Prime Minister, to make sure they can get out across the country, to make sure everyone has the opportunity to be able to go and talk to them? No, I don't think it's a But you're not wasting it on a campaign video. We're not. There we go. Good to talk to you. Thank Thanks you very so much. much indeed.